Hi, welcome to Spry Whimsy Fiber Arts. I'm Peter. Today I'm going to work on a felting project. I'm going to work on making a witch's style hat. Um, I won't be making it in black because that makes for bad video. But they can be made in all sorts of fun colors. Inside can be completely different than the outside. It doesn't matter. Um, we will be incorporating a little bit of locks in the top. Not quite this long. It, when it gets this long, it kind of gets hard to actually wear sometimes. Um, you can do it in different shapes. So you can layer on if you want. Um, there is a black one here. This one I threw some um, uh, Angelina fibers between layers to get me a little bit of sparkle. But that's what we're going to do today. So let's get started. All right, so today's materials, <clears throat> my work surface is a um, solar pool cover um, on a, just a raised table. I've got my template shape. This is made from laminate floor underlayment, which is just a thin foam. It is very similar to packing foam except the packing foam when you buy that comes in 12 inch perforated so after a while it will start to fall apart on you this is much more robust material to work with um, I've got my merino wool rovings to play with here a couple different colors I have a little bit of mohair locks that we're going to put at the point and I got some silk lap um, that's hand dyed that we're going to throw a little bit of this into the into the mix so let's get started oh and I got my crock of soapy water a little bit of palm olive in there and the ball sprinklers let's get going all right I grabbed a couple more things I grabbed some scissors a towel we'll need that at some point and some chalk sidewalk chalk so I'm going to take my sidewalk chalk, lay this down, are we all in frame here, see everything, there we go, and I'm going to trace an outline. So what we're ultimately doing is we're doing a hat with a resist and just happens to be in this shape. So I'll set that aside. I'm going to grab a little bit of this. Grab my scissors and cut some off. Because this is way more than I'm going to need. Now unlike Silk Hanky, this doesn't quite stretch the same. It's a little different but it has a lot of the same properties in the end. Set that aside. We're going to stretch this out. Let it hang beyond what we're working on so I can wrap it around later. Now I don't really want to wrap around my bottom. I'd rather be wrapping around the sides. Now that just made it really hard to see where I'm working. So I'll just have to keep track as I go. Now, the way I can help myself is just do a little water here. Put that back down. It'll help me see where we're working again. And, okay, this is going to be my outside color. And we're going to start at the bottom. And I'm going to, as I pull this, I'm pulling, the end I pull is going to the bottom. And as I go along, I'm going to have thin overlapping layers going on up here and the crisp edge at the bottom like that 
and off over there and I'll just continue on up here. Now that I got that laid out and know it all fits, I'm going to wet this down. I'm going to put this over the top for a minute. Well, it looks like I need to make an adjustment here. Okay, I know I got a lot hanging out beyond. That's not a big deal because we're going to ultimately wrap that around to the front side later. Now I'm going to just add a little water on here so I can rub this, just the part that is laid out and that the, this resist is going to be sitting in. I do have a lot more up here than I probably should have. Now this is just going to lightly felt what's underneath the uh, resist here and kind of keep it in place. I'm just going to peel that up and that gives me a clear indication of the shape of the hat it's going to be. Dry my hands before I grab my inside color. So I'm only going to make this a two layer hat. If I made it a three layer hat it wouldn't shrink as fast um, and if I made it a three layer hat it would be more it would be definitely a thicker more robust hat but we're going to make this a two layer hat. Um, it's not going to be as warm but these are more decorative than warm in this design. Now because I want to have a brim at the bottom, the very bottom I am going to do the same on the first row here as I did at the top or as I did on the first layer and the, the lay the fibers in the same direction because I want this to flare out when I'm done. Now the rest of this I'm doing in the other direction to create a good firm fabric. There's going to be a little bit of overlap. I do want this to hang over a little because I want it to wrap around the uh, resist. And we'll just finish laying this out. Now as I came up with the other one, I kind of curved around a little here, so I'm going to counter that up here, going the other way, out into the peak. Set that one aside. Get my sprinkler back. Wet that back down. Remember, always re-squeeze, put it back in your crock for the next time. You can see that up there. So I let it refill so next time I need it it's ready to go. Okay, setting this back on again. Again I went way out there. Much more than I should have. I think I was over this way a little more. You don't want to do too much repositioning, then things just get ugly. And I'm going to rub this right on in to place. It's a little difficult here out in the point to work with. And I'm really just rubbing it until I see that 
It is kind of just meshing in with the previous layer. It's all flattened out. Take the fluffies out of it. I'm going to take a quick peek at it. It's a little difficult on these corners. Make sure you got enough fiber out there. It's like I got plenty everywhere else. I didn't give myself quite enough here to play with. Now we're going to take a look at it. We'll be putting this back down, but this is just showing me I can see that I have a solid layer. It's a little funky up here, but I got a lot of fiber up there, so I'm not worried about it. So I'm going to put that back down in position. I'm going to grab some of these locks. See if I can find some nice long ones. Now, I'm going to take the tips of this and just tease it open a little bit. Set that out there. Do that a few more times. These are mohair locks. Also works very well with tease water locks. Those get those you can get much longer length with than the mohair. This is a kid mohair, I believe. Okay, so that's out there. So the mohair itself doesn't felt, but the wool will grab onto it. So as I wrap this around it, out here. Just see that. All right, so I'll wrap the wool around it, let the locks hang out a little bit. Moisten that a little bit. I don't want to do too much right now. That just kind of holding that in place. And start agitating those fibers a little bit and keep these hanging off the end. All right, now I'm going to go over the whole thing and start to wrap the sides in the top, the inner layer first. Okay, so I'm going to take my inner layer. You know, it's probably better if I just add a little moisture here to hold it in place when I do that. So as I bring it around, it stays where I put it. And since it's going a different direction of the other fiber that's there, it's fairly easy to isolate it and just pull that around. And do the same thing on the other side. So that's been wrapped around. Now you want to make sure it's snug to the edge of the resist because we want as little bit of a seam as we can get away with. And if you have bulk sitting in here, you're going to wind up with a seam. That's hard to get rid of. Now I'm going to go back to my interior color. And again, working from out here doing the radiating direction. I know that this I'm going to cut out down here, so I'm not all that concerned about wrapping this edge because we want to take that out eventually. And out to the end there. And then, now I don't want to go beyond. I want to use this as my edge that I wrapped around because I don't want it to hang out beyond the edge too much. Gets a little hard when it gets narrower than the length of the fiber out here, so I'm going to have to improvise a little. And then come back down here. Again, thin overlapping layers. Don't try to get it all in one shot. You're overlapping the previous one as you go. 
take this right to the edge fill in my middle sort of feel it do you feel like you have coverage everywhere is it a good layer see a little bit of white right there coming through a little bit over here on this edge all right I'm gonna wet this down again okay so I've grabbed a different piece of foam that's bigger than this if I can get it laid out the right way it should fit over this set that down now I'm gonna get that wet so my fingers slide and then feel the edges now now that I got three layers down and that resist you can feel where that edge of the hat is so I can rub right up to the edges and not really much beyond and just work that layer down up towards the peak there and there's literally a ridge I can ride here with my fingers and then I'm just going to use my fingers rubbing the foam to agitate the fiber underneath to start felting that layer just a little bit you don't want to overdo it because you really want it to felt to the next layer too but I want it to kind of grab onto itself okay gently peeling this off and you can see I'm clearly marked on that edge Dry my fingers again, and now we're going to wrap the towel outer layer around the edge of the form. I'm going to leave the silks out here for the moment. We'll get to that. Gets a little weird on the inside curve here, trying to pull it in. Well, again get this snug to the edge of the form so you don't wind up with too much of a seam now I got a lot of fiber up top here so I'm probably not going to have to add any more up here if I lay it out nicely now Now because I'm going to have this silk layer on top, adding a little color, my blending from the two colors I worked with here are not all that critical. Okay, I got plenty of water here, so I'm just going to squeeze this to hold all that in place. Because there's just excess water up here. Leave that. All of this edge is in. All of this edge is in. A little bit here yet. all that in okay so you can see what I was doing here I'm pulling all this edge snug to the form and then we'll add the final layer on here okay so I'm gonna reverse the direction I did this before so I'm gonna start from the top now I'm already into my mixed area here so I'm taking both both of my colors here and I want the orange on top so I got the orange literally on top of my peachy color here and I'm pulling them and I'm making sure the fuzzy edge is going up to blend now that I've done a little bit of that I'm going to flip it over because I'm going to start heading more towards the peach over the tangerine 
and lay that down in there. Feathering it up. Crisp edge at the bottom and the feather edge up. a little bit more where I'm still blending here and then I'll just go to a solid color at the bottom all right I'll get rid of the tangerine and just go solid for the rest of the way down didn't quite cover that so again thin overlapping layers I'm not trying to cover it all at once still feathering up because ultimately I want a crisp edge at the bottom. Although there will probably be a little cutting happening down there anyway. A little more here before I do my final edge. Alright. And that's that layer down. Wet that down. Grab my big piece again, and find a spot where it sits over everything. A little more water. Rub that in. Hold it in place. And every little bit of this does start some felting. Even if it is just lightly at this point. But again, you always start lightly and work your way more aggressive as you go. Alright, peel that off. Now, Drying my hands again. Now we're going to pull the silk around. Again, this inside curve is kind of weird. Does some strange things. Bring this, stretch it down to the bottom. This is going to come way down and across like that. Now this is when you find out how snaggy your fingers are. And to be honest, I haven't been felting much lately. Normally when I felt a lot, my hands actually are softer and less snaggy than they are right now. I really like the palm olive. It does keep my fingers from being snaggy. Okay, a little bit of water on top here. Hold that down. Grab this again. I'm going to work on part of it at a time. So I want to really work this bottom. So the silk lap, those are the kind of things you find out there from independent dyers. And there are all sorts of fabulous colorways and they come in massive sizes. They're meant to, to for quilt batting. So they're made, they come in large quantities. So you can do a lot with a little bit with that stuff. Got that there. Let's get the top. Make sure I get all that in. This doesn't feel like it's really wrapping in well. Let's pull that in around the form. You really want to kind of make sure you're snug to that edge. Now, I'm going to take a second and clean off all my dry goods and just have a wet space now. Okay. Now, before I get too far in here, I'm going to flip this over because by working it a little bit as I went, I can do that. It's felted it together enough to do that. Now, I'm going to take these edges and pull them in a little bit because there's some extra that I need to pull back to keep it from seaming up on me. 
especially up here in the point. Now here, where I got these out, I'm going to gently roll this, keeping those tips fairly dry. As long as they're dry, they're not going to do any felting. And that gets that going out there. And all that pulled in. And I am going to roll the bottom up on this side. This is something that I will be cutting later. But for now, I'm just going to roll that up. Get all these corners in. And then bring this back and do some more rubbing. Really working that edge. A little water just makes it so your fingers slide. Rub every direction, really start to agitate it. Now, everything I've done so far has been at room temperature water, nothing hot. There's no heat involved yet. We'll throw a little bit at the very end. Okay, when I look here, I can see a lot of still separate. So I'm going to rub that a little bit more. Try to work that in. Alright, check the edges again. Flip it. Check those edges over here too. Make sure everything still looks good. Alright, now we're going to go into a rolling session. Okay. I made a slight adjustment to the size of my pool cover, so it's right sized for what I'm about to do. I have enough to fold over and cover up the work, so it's completely encapsulated in here. So when I roll it, I'll be rubbing on both sides, a little bit of runoff. So I'm going to take this, turn it 90, so it's working to my side. Now, when I'm doing something that's kind of this thick, I'm only going to do a couple rolls, maybe 20 max, usually 10 or 15, and then turn it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, I'm just going to do 15, feels about right right now. Keep my towel handy, clean up my messes as I go. Now, I don't want to go much more than that because there will be some sudden shrinkage. And if you go too far in one direction, things will get kind of mucked up. So that's why I'm doing just short little bursts. And I'm not putting a lot of pressure on it at this point. Okay, so the rolling is agitating those fibers. And since I've got the bubbles on both sides right now, working it, it's doing it on both sides at the same time. And whatever direction I'm rolling in is the direction it's shrinking. So this next round, when I'm rolling this way, it will start to pull it in this way. So that's why we keep turning it so we're shrinking it evenly in all directions. And just a little at a time. See there. Now, especially when you're doing short rolling like this, there's no need to tie up your bubble wrap. It, you take more time tying it than actually rolling it. Okay, each time I'm turning it clockwise just so I'm consistent. I always turn clockwise. Now I'm going to flip it over. And as you can see, over here in my corner now, there, it's starting to poke through because the plastic isn't shrinking, but the, sh the felt is. 
I'm going to give this tip just a little bit of a roll, help it along, turn that up. Now, I'm going to take this, it's really sloppy, I can see water pooling, and I don't really want that. So I'm going to take this and just drain off a little bit of water, I don't want it dry, but I don't want it pooling anymore. All right, still wet. There's my corner over there that's poking out. I'm gonna pull that out and just cover it up a little bit. And same on this end. Not pooling anymore, but still wet. And we're gonna continue rolling on the other side now. I'm just massaging the edges a little bit here so they don't get too flat and seamy. It's all the way around on that side. Now we're going to work it a little differently. Instead of rolling it in the bubble wrap, we're going to roll it against itself. So I'm just going to take this, let my body hold that the bubble wrap in place, and just pushing away from myself. It's going to be floppy. It's going to be a little messy because it still has that foam in there. And again, we don't want to do this for too long. Turn it. Go the other way. See, I still have water in here. It's still squishy. I didn't drain it completely. I just didn't want it all puddly. Turning it again, and put that tail on the inside. All right. I'm going the other way. All right. So now it has gotten much smaller and starting to show some thickness here. That thickness is the foam inside starting to curl over. So before we go too much further, I want to cut this bottom edge out to reveal and pull out the resist. It's really well felted now. It shouldn't want to felt to itself too easily. And we need to leave this, give this room to shrink. Of course, try to do this without cutting your resist too much so you can keep reusing it for future projects. So, now if we take a look here, there's the resist. It's gotten a little smaller, not a whole lot smaller than it yet, but it will start to shrink in the next couple phases. So that gives you a good idea of what we're working at. Set that aside. Now I'm going to turn this inside out because I want to work it against itself some more. And it's a little hard to do with a point. That's going to live down in there. That's not as critical. That's more decorative than anything. some more. Now without the plastic in it, it can get a little tighter as I roll it. Now rubbing felt against felt is one of the quickest ways to firm up the felt to really accelerate the folding process. 
So this will start to shrink pretty quick. So you gotta be careful. You don't wanna go too far. I know I still got a little ways to go before I'm getting down to head size because it's still the same size as the form. All right. Go the other way. Give a little stretch and pounding too. And I also wanted to make sure we cut that out sooner than later because you also want to felt that edge that you cut. After you cut it, you want to make sure it has a little time to seal itself back up. Now, if I lay this out. Try to work this edge. It's the seam on the inside. You can, I don't know if you can see, there's the edge. I'm going to try to work that just a little bit, smooth it out. Turn it right back out. Now you can still see there's a little bit of a seam line on here, so it's got a little bit of a backbone to it. I think you can see that. I hope you can see that right through there. And that's on both sides. So we still want to try to work that. But that's just the nature of doing a resist is we kind of wind up with some of these seam like features, especially down here. I've got a lot of it where it's bunched up. See if it's moved any. Getting a little smaller. Certainly changing shape a little bit. Still got a little ways to go. So now that I get it right side out again. Now, to counter that seam, I'm going to lay it sort of flat against itself here and work it this way. Just working this edge knowing I want it to be smooth in the end or ish smooth ish beauty of these witches kind of hats is you can you can make a rustic if you want um, if you're doing a true black witches hat or something like that or something in that variation if it gets thin and you get a hole in it it's not that big a deal because it just adds character and makes it look old instead of a fresh brand new one but these can also make just wonderful shaped hats. There's still quite a bit of water here. So I'm gonna take this over to the sink and drain it out, and then we're gonna get some hot water. So I wanna get the water out right now, so there's room to put some hot water in it. And I got my teapot ready to go. Now as you go, you do want to try to throw it on your head and make sure you're not over shrinking and it's also a good time to do it right after you drained it. But I still got a little ways to go, but not much. It's getting close. I just got to make sure I get my felt firmed up because right now it's just way too floppy unless this is what you're going for. All right. So now that it's dry, I can add some moisture in the form of heat. Get some hot water here. Careful, careful. This is hot. But it cools very quickly. And that's one of the properties of wool. It keeps you warm and can keep you cool. I'm doing my push away method and it just tightens up and tightens up and tightens up once you find your balance and not too much soap not too much water and 
as it tightens up, the felt has firmed up. Alright, time for another comparison. Where we started and where we're going. I think I can go down, but I don't want to come in a whole lot more. But I gotta do a little stretching. Also helps make for a better felt. Make sure you don't tear it in the process, but this will help round it out, make it less flat and square. Because remember, we started flat. And we're trying to make a three-dimensional object here. Pounding it out from the inside, helping make it round. All right, I still got my locks hanging out out here. Try to open those up a little bit. Want to make sure that they are distinct. Make sure this is well felted too up here. And round. Make sure that's round. Okay, gonna add a little more heat and pound on it some more. Okay, I just soaked up all the water laying around. I'm going to go drain it again, and then we'll keep working it. You know, while we're here, we're going to beat it and get some more hot water. Hey, got my hot water going. And let's toss it around. Drain it again and check sides. Now before I even try to put it on my head, I'm going to try to beat it from the inside out again. Just to round it out. See how we're doing all right getting closer I don't have a huge brim anymore and it seems to be about a head size for somebody and we can add some folds and things into it I think I'm gonna do just a little more beating on it I don't want to go any smaller than that. I might have to trim a few of these crazies off, but that's okay. So I'm going to take it, rinse out any extra water, any soap in it, and then um, hit it with an iron and shape it.
Now I'm doing this with hot water. So it's very, very, very warm water. Make sure I get the suds out. And you can see I don't have any suds when I squeeze that really hard. There's no suds. And you'll also note how dry it is compared to once I added water to it. You can see it doesn't go in all that easily. Ooh, that's toasty. So I can get as much moisture out as I can. And that can include a little of this. And it's a pretty dry hat right now. And we'll break out the iron and a couple shaping tools. Okay, to help me out here, I got a couple little shaping tools. I got a crock, cookie can, and a stainless steel bowl that's a roughly head size-ish that allows me to pull this over this, kind of get it into more of a head shape. But first I'm going to steam the heck out of it. So I'm going to work from the inside of my hat. The outside of my hat has all that silk on it. I really don't want to hit that with an iron if I can avoid it, at least not for long. And I have the iron very hot. The wool can take it but I don't want to touch it directly with the iron on the silk. And I'm really going to hit this edge. Put this over. Quick stretching. I got which side goes where. I got curves going here. We're going to take advantage of those curves. Now, I'm going to play a little game here where I take down to the cookie can. Because the cookie can is going to let me force my brim. Crock. And I have to move quick because, yes, I am going to be hitting the silk now. See if you can see where I am now, way down here. Now, because I did the whole brim with the fibers going the same direction, going out, it is easily flattened out. It wants to flatten out, not go up and down sit for a second pull it out now I do have some oddities here it's gonna snip a few of them off that are really hanging out that would be annoying to someone wearing it now the edges aren't perfectly smooth and that's okay on this one now that helped force the brim Can back out of there. Now a lot of this is just letting it sit and dry in whatever shape you put it into. So we're going to do one more steaming overall. Put it on the head and shape it. Just pump and steam into it. get here find my shape find my glasses so I can see what I'm doing okay so this wants to curl off in one direction or the other and we'll let that and I feel like this just needs a tuck in but I need to go to a mirror where I can actually see what I'm doing okay you can kind of see me I'm at a mirror now I can do that pull that out Let's go put it on the table to set. Okay, we're gonna keep working this a little bit. And just sort of pinching this edge. Refluff in there. You can put stuff in there to help hold it up if you want. 
I never have, but some people will stuff it with bubble wrap or something. I'm just sort of pinching my edges. I feel like I could have gone a little thicker with my fibers. I mean, you, I could have done this as a three layer, but I wanted this to be a nice, lightweight, thin hat. If I had gone with the third layer, it would be much more robust and stiffer by the time I got it down to a head size. I'm going to try to work the inside. I don't know if you can see it in there. So I can work these edges and sort of smooth it all out. So I'm going to let that have some dry time. And then we'll take a look at what it looks like after it's dry. Um, because the silk is going to change characters quite a bit. Just kind of working it on my head a little too. Because that's the best round object I got to try to smooth it out. All right, well, that's drying. To answer a question I know I'm going to get, I am 17 inches along my edge of my brim. I am 14 inches on the flat part at the bottom of the hat before the brim. And my overall height here is about 17 or 18 inches. And it's just a freeform shape. You can make your own, do any shape you want. I just sort of drew it out with a sharpie and then cut it out to get roughly what I want it to be. Well, there you have it. Making a hat with a resist in a somewhat witch's style. Um, I hope that was useful to you. If you think it's useful, please like the video, subscribe to my channel, check out my other felting videos. There's quite a few on here. Um, they date back a few years, but are still very relevant. So thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. And don't forget to check out our website, sprywhimsy.com. We now have quite a few things online available for sale.